Well, it is a busy day for tech earnings. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are all set to report earnings after the bell today. So what are the most important points that investors should be looking for as we get these results? Well, talking to us now, joining us now to talk about this is Lou Bassanese, founder of Disruptive Tech Research. Lou, great to speak with you. Great to be here again. Let's start with Google. So you've said you're not expecting an upside surprise when it comes to this company's quarterly earnings. What's the most important point investors should be looking for when it reports later today? Yeah, I think it all comes down to mobile, and it's not you know what Google's been in the headlines for mobile lately and mobile get-in or their new wireless service. It's really the mobile advertising business. Um, it's their key growth driver, but the, co the competition is really increasing in that market with the likes of Facebook and even Yahoo aggressively pursuing market share. Uh, so for them, you know, you're going to have to deal with some currency headwinds as well. But uh, the key focus is really going to be how fast is that mobile advertising business segment growing. Um, like, like you said, Google has not consistently beat expectations. In fact, for the last five quarters, they've missed expectations. So even though profits are supposed to be up, I'm not looking for an upside surprise. Yeah, and certainly with these uh, with these tech results, it's not always the top line and the bottom line that investors are looking for. They're looking for some of the other, uh, I guess, other factors that that tie into uh, into these numbers. So in the case of Google, they're going to be looking, as you mentioned, at those core results um, above and beyond the top and bottom line. Let's talk about Amazon. What's the most important point investors should be looking for with this company? Yeah, Amazon's had a bit of a split personality the last two quarters. I mean, one quarter they surprised the report of surprise profit, shares are up. The quarter before that, they miss on the top line. Uh, I really think the focus this quarter is going to be their cloud business, AWS. This is the first time that Amazon's going to break out the results separately. It's been traditionally and historically rolled up yeah. in that North America other line item. And, you know, buying into Amazon's always been buying into that promise uh, of future profits, not profits today, but profits tomorrow. And right now, the top line growth is decelerating, and it's, you know, it's going to be the slowest quarter in two years for the top line in terms of growth. So uh, they've got to switch investors' attention to AWS, where, where their growth is much more robust. I think last quarter they mentioned it was up, you know, usage was up about 90%. So if you look at the print, uh, the headline 90% versus a 14% growth, obviously you want investors to glom on to that 90% that figure. Certainly, and, and it'll, as you mentioned, it'll be really interesting to see how those numbers are broken out in this report, especially since Amazon's actually been one of the stocks that's doing really well since the start of the year after a really rough 2014. Um, let's turn to Microsoft. What are you looking for in Microsoft's earnings? Yeah, I, I mean, with Microsoft, it's really how soft of a quarter is it going to be? I mean, IDC came out with new data on the PC market, and, and we all know we're living in a mobile-first, cloud-first world, but Microsoft still relies so heavily on the PC market for, for their sales base. And IDC is now predicting a 5% decline when previously they were predicting a 3.3% decline. So uh, if Microsoft is even faring worse than that, uh, I think you're going to have a lot of volatility in shares after the report. And, and really now it's, uh, you know, the honeymoon's over for Microsoft CEO. It's been over a year. He's got to prove that they can not just survive but thrive in, in a post-PC world. Uh, and that's going to be a, a tough hurdle to overcome today in today's report. So given all of these factors with all of these companies that we've just discussed, of the three, which would you pick? Would you pick any of them? Yeah, I'd pick Google for sure. I think it's okay. a de facto ETF on the future of technology. I mean, everyone thinks of Google as search, but think about the exposure you get to so many other compelling tech trends. I mean, you've, Google's involved with robotics, uh, the smart home, the Internet of Things, wearables. I mean, the list goes on, even cutting-edge healthcare. So uh, investors would be well-served if they're looking for a single way to play all those trends uh, and can only invest in one tech stock for the next decade. I mean, hands down, it's got to be Google. Well, Google. Uh, <laughs> Lou Bassanis, thanks for joining us. Thanks for giving us your pick. Thank you for watching. I'm Morgan Brennan. Have a great day. Hey, YouTube fans. I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.